Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, May 24th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Centers Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Video players have often been a favorite attack vector for attackers because there are usually numerous vulnerabilities that can be exploited and of course it's difficult for the user to always be up to date on patches. The latest such exploit was just made public by Checkpoint. It does affect a number of different video players. What they found was that Popcorn, Cody, VLC, also known as Videolan and Streamio are all vulnerable to this particular exploit, which actually affects not so much the video files themselves, but subtitles. Now the problem here is that you could download these subtitle files in addition to a movie that you already own. So if this movie came without subtitles in a particular language uh, that you're interested in, then you can download these subtitle files later. And of course, that's how you may pick up one of these corrupt malicious files. Now, Checkpoint did disclose this vulnerability to the four named products and patches have been released, so better make sure you are again up to date. In particular, since uh, these video players had issues with subtitle files before, it probably shouldn't take too long for an attacker to come up with an exploit. And recent mobile phones have started adding iris scanners uh, as part of uh, their biometric authentication, in addition to typically fingerprint sensors. Now, one of the nice things of iris scanners, of course, is uh, that you essentially can get logged into the phone just by looking at it. Also, iris scanners, of course, work better if you are wearing gloves and the like. But just like any other biometric uh, identification, it's, of course, just a matter of the resolution of the sensor in how well they work and how easily they are bypassed. Now the trick here with the iris scanner is that in order to bypass it, the picture that's being used to fool the scanner has to be recorded with a camera with the infrared filter removed. Often also cameras that have a night mode can be used in order to take these pictures. That is all possible because first of all, we are not talking about retina scans. Retina scans look at the back of of the eye and typically to take these pictures you have to be really close up to the camera that's of course inconvenient and somewhat intrusive iris pictures on the other hand they just look at the surface of the eye and that's much easier to accomplish by removing the infrared filter you typically get a better contrast in particular if the color of the iris happens to be quite dark they were able to take these pictures with with a sufficiently sophisticated camera at a distance of uh, several meters. So in no ways do you have to be very close and you probably can take these pictures without the victim recognizing that the picture is being taken. But uh, from what I have read in their short write-up, just uh, taking, for example, a social media selfie is usually not sufficient for this attack. The experiments uh, they have conducted here were done using the Samsung Galaxy S8. So that's a very recent phone and probably one of the higher quality iris scanners that's currently available to consumers. And Verizon fixed an interesting cross-site scripting flaw in its messaging application. If you are a Verizon customer, then you can read and respond to your SMS messages via a web-based application. Now, the trick here was that in order to run this application, when the user receives an image, Verizon is actually proxying that image and rewriting the URL. So by sending a specific crafted URL, the attacker is then able to rewrite the href attribute in the image tag. And with that, they're able to inject JavaScript into the page. The particular proof of concept that's being shown here in the blog post does show how then the entire screen can actually be turned into an on mouse over event that can then be used to trigger additional script. 
Now, Verizon has, of course, a lot of customers. I don't think many of them are using this web app. However, I think what's really interesting here is how this particular cross-site scripting flaw passed through whatever validation they had and was really triggered by this rewrite of the URL. Now, Verizon fixed this particular problem within about a week or so after it was reported to them. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.